you are who you hang with is probably one of the most factual statements you will ever hear in your life. Growing up, your parents most likely told you to be careful who you choose to be friends with. This is because your friends almost always have an influence on you in some way. And if you have bad friends who have bad habits, then you're most likely going to follow as well. And this is probably the biggest nightmare that every parent has when they're raising their child. This is basic human nature. We want to fit in. Usually we have the same mentality and the same habits as our friends. And I know that growing up, I would hear that a lot from my parents to choose the right friends to not hang around with the wrong crowd but obviously as a kid growing up going into your teens you're you know going through this like different mood shift and you know you're starting to be a little bit rebellious with your parents we go through this certain point where we try to do things our way we think we know everything and so we choose to ignore some of the pieces of advice that our parents give us but one thing that i've learned so far in life is that if you choose to ignore the life lessons that someone ahead of you in life is trying to teach you is trying to ingrain in your brain so that you avoid mistakes that the, so that other person made life is going to teach you that same lesson anyways but sometimes life might even teach it to you the hard way jim Rohn is very famous for saying that you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with but sometimes it doesn't even take a group of people to influence you in some way sometimes it might just take one person to influence you in some way growing up i was never a troubled kid i was never one of those kids that you know always ends up you know in suspension and you end up getting expelled i was never one of those kids growing up i never really caused a scene in school or outside of school i was always usually the quiet kid but to be honest there was one point in my life where actually that changed and that was in middle school now just to give you some context before i continue during this time in middle school when i had just entered my school was regarded as the top 10 most dangerous schools in the city and so as you can imagine most of the kids in that school were not good influences and in that school was when i ended up meeting a kid who would end up becoming one of my best friends during that time we would hang out a lot we had usually the same classes all the time so we would always be hanging out with each other during this time when i was started to hang out with this kid was when i started to act a little bit different now like I mentioned already, I was usually the quiet, respectful kid. I remember in elementary school, my teachers loved me. I mean, I was just one of those favorite kids that a lot of teachers had. But when I went to middle school and I started hanging out with this kid, a lot of things changed. I started to act a bit more rebellious. I would be extremely disrespectful to my teachers. There would be times where I would curse at them because they would get me pissed off. During that time, like I said, I meant I'm hanging out with this kid. And so I'm thinking that I need to act a certain way in order to fit in the group, right? So I started to act more rebellious than ever. This was kind of a surprise to my parents because like I said, in elementary school, I was not the kid who would get phone calls from like being disrespectful or doing bad things or anything like that. But when I came to middle school and I started hanging out with the, you know, the wrong crowd, I started getting these phone calls. I remember I was getting like so many phone calls during this period that sometimes my mom would have to come to school and pick me up because I would get a phone call home and they would just be tired. They would just be like, just take him home. There would be times with the, where their assistant principal would call my parents and usually they'll call my mom right because whenever it came to phone calls i always like wrote down who do they call in case you know i act bad or in case something happens i always put down my parents mostly my mom's phone number because i didn't want my dad to find out if i did anything bad because it would go a lot more worse if my dad found out so my mom usually would come to my school and pick me up because I would get phone calls, I would be disrespectful to my teachers. During this time, I was sagging my pants because I thought it was cool. And like all the kids in my school were sagging their pants, like probably like one person or two, like that good, good kid that's trying to do, you know, be like the teacher's pet. He's not sagging his pants, but like usually the, like the rest of the kids were sagging their pants and when we would have lunch instead of us going to lunch and eat eat lunch like in the cafeteria we would actually be in the hallways my school was like di like different type of floors and so we would go to different floors my school also like there were schools inside the school and so we would go to other schools inside the like the whole building and we would just be doing like dumb stuff i remember there would be times where we would be in the hallways and we would just be walking and he would be like screaming like gang words or like gang slurs and and i would just be hanging around with him because like i said he was one of my best friends during this time and so i would just you know follow the crowd and then there would be like rare occasions where like on the weekends we would hang out like outside of the school because the school were closed but we would go outside the school when he would come he wouldn't come like empty-handed he would come with like a pocket knife because you know in the neighborhood that we were in like is this dangerous and so he would come and he would come with a pocket knife in case someone tried to run up on him and so after a period of time of hanging out with him, I started to act, like I said, more rebellious and I started to get so many phone calls home. Like my mom would come and she would like talk to my teachers and my teacher would tell them I was hanging out with the wrong crowd. That specifically, I was hanging out with this kid who I shouldn't be hanging around with. My teachers would tell my mom, like if they are going to give me any advice to 
tell me to not hang around with that kid anymore because that's one of the reasons why I am acting this way. Now, during this time, like I said, he's one of my best friends. And so I don't want to just like, you know, all of a sudden stop talking to him because that would be like messed up. And it was especially difficult to stop hanging out with him because we literally had like the same classes all the time. There was probably like one class that we didn't have together. But other than that, every single class, we had the same class together. We would sit next to each other. We like, we would talk all the time. And after my parents were like trying to tell me like, yo, stop hanging out with this kid, especially my dad being so rigorous and loud. And he's like, you know, trying to put fear in me, like don't hang out with this kid or else, you know, things that are going to happen, you know, I'm going to teach you a lesson, things like that. I started to try to spend less time with him. But every single time I would try to spend less time with him, he would like call me fake. And whenever we would like be together and he would dare me to do something, right? Something that's not good to do and I wouldn't do it, he would call me a pussy. Now, as time went on, obviously you guys know that the semesters change and when your semesters change, your classes change. And so as time went on, I started to do a lot more better mainly because my semester was changing and so we would have different classes. So we would barely have any classes together. Like we would have half of the classes together. The only time we would really hang out now was during lunch. And then going into my final year of middle school was when we had like no classes together. We would only hang out and talk, but not that much during lunch. During this time, I started to get my act together because I remember the previous year before that, I was close to going to summer school and i never went to summer school before i never even repeated the grade and so for me to potentially go to summer school and even repeat the grade that was like scary i'm not gonna lie because i didn't want to repeat the grade again and have to see all my friends go ahead in the next grade and graduate earlier than me and i'm still stuck with these other kids that i don't even know like i didn't want that to happen and so i thought i would take my classes my started to take my studies a lot more serious because i seriously wanted to graduate and then once i finally graduated middle school and then went on to high school i made a drastic change in myself now just to give you some context again i'm being serious you guys are probably thinking i'm lying but i'm being dead serious my high school was also considered one of the top 10 most dangerous schools in the city and so i had to be very aware of who i wanted to hang out with because i had already learned lessons in middle school of hanging out with the wrong crowd and i didn't want to repeat that same thing in high school now the friend that i mentioned that i would hang out with a lot in middle school didn't go to my high school in fact none of my friends went to my high school i was the only one in that high school that was like not knowing anybody like a lot of the kids knew each other because they came from the same school i was literally the, like the lonely one that like knew no one and so i was like that lone wolf in high school now in middle school i was being loud i was being reckless right a little bit i was hanging out with the cool group right that's what i wanted to do i wanted to hang out with the cool group because i didn't want to be that guy who was like by himself in the lunchroom you know i didn't want to be that guy in middle school but in high school i'm not gonna lie i didn't care about any of that i honestly just wanted to graduate high school like i really did not care anything about fitting into the cool group or being loud and being reckless and trying to be known in high school i was very aware of my circle during high school to be honest i didn't really have like a lot of friends during high school i didn't have like 30 friends or like 20 friends i had a small circle like there was a lot of people who i would be like yo what's up but there was a few people who we would like hang out with during lunch or during recess like there were a few people who you know we would you know text each other like there was a few people that i did that with during high school because i was very aware of who i wanted to hang out with i wasn't disrespectful like i was to my teachers in middle school like i was more much more respectful like i was more in control of my anger during the time but i didn't try to do things in order to show off to the kids and or try to be cool or try to act tough like i didn't do any of those things to be honest i was just like i want to get done with my classes you know if you guys want to be friends with me cool if you guys don't i don't care like i had seen so many things during high school like if i were to tell you the things that i saw happen in high school i would have so many score stories like i would just leave that for another video some other day you could literally be hanging around with the wrong person the wrong crowd and you could be involved in some big ass drama that you did not want to be involved in in the first place like the amount of drama the amount of things that i avoided during high school it's insane like i'm just glad that i was able to think smart during this time and avoid so many drama that had happened in my school the point that i'm trying to make with this story is that during middle school the reason why i was being rebellious is mostly because i was hanging around with the wrong crowd i was being influenced if i would have just stayed away from the wrong crowd or from being around one person who wasn't influencing me in a good way despite being alone for a while while i find my friends or my new friends that are not influencing me in a bad way i would have avoided a lot of the things that i did in middle school i literally remember during this time i had one teacher in middle school who literally like close to hated me like she hated me so much like she literally despised having me in class i remember i would go inside the class and she would you know have like a like a, a different face with other kids and when she looked at me she had like this you know stank face like i don't even want you in my class but i mean what else can i do now that i'm an adult i have grown so much and i have learned so much from that experience especially with how powerful your friends really do have an influence on you and even though i know that there's a rising epidemic of loneliness now in america and, and all over the world ever since the pandemic happened it has gotten even worse people are more lonelier than ever before even though that's happening i don't think that that should be an excuse as to why you should still hang around with the wrong crowd 
just for the sake of not being alone. And when I say the wrong crowd, I just mean someone who has a negative influence on you. This could be someone who is, you know, enticing you to do bad things. Like in my case, I was in middle school and I was hanging out with the wrong crowd and I was doing things that were not me. Or this could be someone influencing you to do drugs or to have bad habits, to have bad vices. Or this could be someone negatively influencing you to not be in shape. They're not working out. They're out there, you know, doing nothing at all. This is how someone negatively impacts you. And even though there is a big problem with loneliness rising more and more and around the world, I think there's also a big problem with people not being okay with being alone, even for a period of time. Because the problem with this is that since you can't be alone, you're forced to, or you feel like you're forced to stay with these friends that you currently have because you don't know what will happen if you leave them and you don't know if you're going to make any better friends. So you stay with the crowd of friends who have bad habits, who have bad vices. They're just doing degenerate activities. You're stuck with those friends because you are afraid of being alone, even for a period of time while you find new, better friends. But why risk being with the wrong crowd just for the sake of not being alone, even for a period of time? The people who you hang around with the most right now, or the ones that you talk to the most right now, these people are influencing you in some way, whether you realize it or not. And there's actually studies that prove this. Researchers from the University of California and from Harvard Medical School found that if your friend becomes obese, you have a 57% chance of becoming obese as well. You need to get rid of the friends that have a negative influence on you right now. I'm very well aware that there's a rising epidemic of loneliness and people are suffering from depression and they're even offering themselves because of the loneliness that they feel. And I'm not advocating for you guys to be alone, but being with the group of friends who are not doing any good, who are negatively influencing you for the sake of not being alone, is not any better than the guy who is alone, but is trying to find the right group to be in. Having friends is great, but you have to be aware if these are bad or good friends. And I'm also not saying to completely abandon your friends, right? To like leave them in the dust and like, you know, you freaking block them on IG and you delete their number. They don't even know where you're at. They're texting you and you're out here like abandoning them. Like, don't do that. Encourage them to improve their lives as well. Encourage them to join you in trying to do better things, trying to add better habits. Like if you have a friend who is out of shape or you're in a group of friends who all of them are out of shape, and you tell them or you encourage them like, yo, bro, let's go to the gym. Let's start doing something to get in shape, right? We look like crap. And they ignore that. Like they don't want to do it because they just don't want to do it then that's when you slowly distance yourself from them because they don't want to change. And if you don't distance yourself from them, you're going to still stay stuck with those habits that they have because they are influencing you the majority of the time because these are the guys that you hang with the most. If your friends are broke and you are too, but you want to change that and they don't want to change it, then you have to slowly distance yourself from them because if not, you're going to remain the same way. You have no other option. You risk being influenced by them. There's a saying that goes, it's better to be a lone wolf than to be with the wrong pack. But there is a mistake that a lot of people make that they become a lone wolf but they don't try to find a better pack to hang around with it adds on to the loneliness epidemic that we have and yeah being alone for a period of time is good it's healthy but being alone for a long period of time for years and having no one to talk to that's where it gets dangerous that's where you start getting depressed because we are social creatures we enjoy socializing that's something that's just innate within us back in the days our ancestors none of them were alone if you were alone back in the day like a lone wolf back then if you were that type of person you died because back then the ones who survived were the ones in groups even introverts who struggle with you know having social anxiety because usually an introvert is someone who has social anxiety even introverts like socializing introverts are people who don't like starting the conversation they don't like initiating it but once you get to know them they're really talkative usually now that doesn't mean that being alone for a period of time is bad actually being alone for a period of time is actually good you learn how not to depend on other people to have fun or to distract yourself with you learn to be friends with yourself the reason why you fear being alone is because you're not friends with yourself there's a path that i've noticed that everyone goes through in their evolution of growth when it comes to their social circle you hang around with the wrong crowd then you are alone for a period of time then you find a new good crowd and then you hang with the right crowd the problem is that a lot of people stay stuck in this phase they don't go on to the next phase which is finding the better crowd to hang around with or finding the better community to text or to talk to that you relate with each other that you sharing the same goals and this is what adds on to the epidemic of loneliness that's rising more and more around the world what i'm basically trying to tell you is that if you're with the wrong crowd don't feel bad for trying to move away or from trying to distance yourself solely from them. You shouldn't feel bad for not hanging around with the wrong crowd because they don't want to grow. They don't want to improve their lives. That's called growth. You're also going to be alone for a period of time because just because you stop hanging around with the wrong friends doesn't mean that new friends are going to all of a sudden you know show up in front of your door you're trying to find the new group of friends that you're trying to hang around with the ones that have these same habits that you want to implement in your life the ones that are creating the life that you want to live in the future and this is going to take some time but you have to be okay with that because it's way better to be alone even for a period of time than to be with the wrong friends just for the sake of not being alone because you're actually hurting yourself even more by doing that because you're going to be adopting the same mindset the same habits that these other guys have and since they're not good influences on you these are going to be bad habits they're going to be bad mentalities be alone 
but then find the right people to be around with. Try to make better friends that align with your goals and that align with who you want to become. Go to places or go to communities where your future friends are most likely going to be hanging around with. If you want to be fit, go to the gym or go to the boxing gym. This is where people are going to be that are trying to improve their physique, that are trying to get in better shape. If you want to be around people who are smart or that or have good habits, go to the library. These are people who are reading. Not a lot of people read. And so if you go to the library and you find a group of people or even one person who's reading a book, maybe that book interests you now you found a person who relates to you that you have the similar interest in if you want to make friends that are striving towards success join a community online join a mentorship this is where people are going to be that are striving to accomplish the same goal that you're trying to accomplish i've met people online who are striving to accomplish the same goals that i have who are striving towards success and you might be thinking why online right well usually if you are in a place where not a lot of people want to be successful and a lot of people are striving it's going to be harder to find people who have the similar mindset as you in your neighborhood or in your school so usually you'll find these people online who are trying to be successful as well. We live in a world now where not only can we meet people in person, but we can also meet them online. And there's nothing wrong with meeting people online. As long as, you know, you, you be careful and you don't hang out, you know, you don't meet some weirdo, you know, online. It's okay to be alone, but don't make it permanent. Because like I said, it is in our nature to seek social interactions. And if you deprive yourself from that, your soul will eventually seek company. And if you don't give it company, it will suffer. But anyways, that's all I got to say. I'm out.